In the previous section, we looked at the importance of authentication and of only showing users the actions they can perform. Now we'll look at how we can build up a menu that reflects this. If you remember the resource models we created last time, you'll probably remember that they were pretty flat. Let's start by creating a menu tree for our application in the database, which we can link to these resources. We'll use a simple adjacency tree model for this, meaning that we need a parent ID field referencing another menu item. We sync this to the database with the create table sequence and create a few sample items. Now let's look at the back end that will load this. We're going to use lazy tree loading to start with, which simplifies our server code. We just need to grab everything which is at the current level, i.e. has the right parent ID. This will give us a good JSON backend for the menu component. We've already seen the kind of data format we need for a normal XStore, which is more of a table and record format. But the tree controls require a different approach to express their hierarchy. Here is an example of the JSON we would expect for a simple table-based data store. Note how the results are an array of similar looking records. For a tree, we need a root element and children of that root. To build a tree model, we use x.data.treeModel instead of the usual x.data.model. We also use the corresponding x.store.treeStore as a base for any tree-based stores. So let's build a tree model to represent our menu items. This is similar to the models we've seen before, but with a different base class. We can add any number of fields to a tree node, just as we can with a normal model. Now create a store to go with it. We also plumb this into a new menu controller, and add that to the main application.js. Now we have all the data structures in place and a skeleton controller for our menu, the next step is to write a view we can plug into our application. Tree controls are a great way of showing this kind of data. In this case, all we need is a very simple tree. So let's go ahead and create a new view file for our menu tree. We will inherit a tree view for this. Let's also give it an alias so that we can use X types against it. Remember that our data model required a synthetic root object which we don't want to show in our menu, so we'll set root visible to false. Now let's give it our tree store which will provide the model and the proxy. Now that we've got the view, let's push the X type into the main viewport so that our menu appears at the side of our screen. We'll also need a requires in there to make sure the view is loaded. Let's start up the application and take a look at what's happening. Now, if we expand a node, you can see the loading indicator and the request that appears in the console, and then the new tree items appear. Let's also add a controller to handle item clicks. Here we're using the item click event, so we can receive the record object associated with that tree node. We then look at the action ID field in the model and figure out what to do. This is where we will wire up the menu items in the database to the actions in our application. We've now seen how you can use the tree data view to show hierarchical data in a menu and wired up the menu actions to controller functions to make them do something. You will see how this pattern of starting with a data store and adding on view components persists across the entire framework.